I've worn my natural look without a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I can I'm understand cool it, man. how you want to get this luscious okay. look that you see on these magazines. Yeah, and you want to be pretty and you want to fit in with everything else yes. that is identified as beautiful. And so that is part of the problem okay. because we look at these magazines and we think that this is the only way that expresses our beauty. I think this is the best thing that's happened to us in terms of our image since the 60s. I think that at that point we had the black and blue beautiful movement and that all was attached to something politically that was happening at the time. But I think that people are becoming more health conscious mm -hmm. more than anything. And I know both of you have pretty unique stories about what actually made you go natural in the first place. And so I'd like to get into that for a minute. Again, if you'd like to see Kim Cole's natural hair journey, then tune into YouTube. You can also search her um, segment with Dr. Drew. And before we move on, I'd like yeah, to just touch a second on our next segment in January. In January, we'll be talking again about Kim Cole's transition in our hot topic. But at the end of the segment, she did a, a whole segment with Dr. Drew on the Dr. Drew Show, which you can also search on YouTube about women making the transition back to natural. But at the end of the discussion, there was a pretty heated moment when there was a discussion between the men and the women about being natural and how the men actually felt about our hair texture. And so that's what we'll talk about next. We'll do a pretty unique experiment that details a woman with natural hair and a woman with, uh, with, with relaxed hair and their dating life. So stay tuned for that. That sounds interesting. I hope we can we can really um, have a real honest discussion yes. about about the subject in a fair, nice discussion mm -hmm. about it because it did get pretty heated. Um, but moving on, I'd like to start by Tony Hickman is the author of Chemical Suicide Death by Association, and I'd like for her to start by telling us a little bit about her transition back to natural and how that started. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, in 2004, I had my first brain aneurysm. And, um, you know, at that time, I was on Universal Records. I was touring. I was doing a lot of things. And so I didn't have brain surgery. I had, like, surgery, but it wasn't brain surgery. And so uh, I got back on the scene probably uh, and, you know, got in magazines, I was doing a lot of big things. And so in 2007, I had completed my album and I went to New Orleans to visit my family. And while I was out there, uh, I was out there with my boyfriend and I got sick. And so I thought I had food poisoning, food poisoning. And, uh, but I didn't, I actually passed out. And when I came to, I was in Tulane Medical Hospital and uh, in the process of getting my head shaved for brain surgery because I had had my second brain aneurysm. Wow. And uh, I was in and out because my mom had to come from Atlanta to get them permission to operate on me. And this all happened just, just like that? Oh yeah, it was, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to be alive because, Absolutely. yeah. Um, and so anyway, I, uh, while I was on the operating table after she came out, I also had a stroke. And so when I came to, I couldn't add two plus two, I couldn't speak, and I couldn't walk. And the doctors told my mom she should think about putting me in a nursing home because it wasn't likely that I would ever walk or speak again. Well, your mother said that's not the case. Yeah, <laughs> and that was it. And a lot of other pregnant people in your oh, family, are you sure? Yeah. And so, oh, I, I know I don't want to get too far into it. Oh, but no, we, I want you to, I want, we want to hear your story. Yeah. Well, um, after all of that, um, and like you said, my praying family was like, no, and not accepting it. And um, before long, it took me about four months before I got out of a wheelchair. But I was walking with a cane and eventually let that go. Uh, my doctor in New Orleans told me, stop perming my hair. And at that time, you know, I was confused and I was just like, whatever. Right. You know, yeah. I had nothing to do with the angry. Yeah, no. yeah. I, I don't think a lot of women think about why it's burning. They just think it's burning, it's time to wash it out. Right. And so when uh, I went back to Atlanta for therapy, um, 
my doctor in Atlanta told me the same thing. And I was like, hold up, something ain't right. Like, something is not right. Why would they be telling me not to relax my hair? Yeah, and it keeps coming to me. Like, you know, I could understand if it was just one time, but this is two separate, you know, hospital facilities. Like, you know, they don't even know. They don't know. And they both tell me that. And they both relax. told me that. And so when I researched why, I found out about perms, dyes, lotions, the old wet toothpaste. I found out all of this stuff, and I'm like, my people need to know this information. Why don't they know this information? And so I put it in a book, and that's the name of my book, Chemical Suicide, Death by Association. It is so important when you go through something like that to be able to, one, to survive it, and two, to be able to successfully tell your story and help other people. I read the book last night, and I can tell you that it is something that you all need to pick up, read it, Think about what you're putting on your body before you leave your house in the morning. Many of us use 900 chemicals before you walk out the door. Between your lip gloss, your deodorant, your mascara, your face wash, your hair products, and especially with our children. Any way that you yes. can figure out how to cut back. Places like Whole Foods, I know you had some uh, places in the book that you mentioned. Um, yeah, definitely. Because that's, I think that's the biggest problem is we think, you know, when we go into Walmart and Walgreens and all of these places, we can just go pick up this stuff because it's on the shelf. It's safe. That's it's right. been, you know, the FDA has said it's safe. And FDA takes 250,000 problems before they report it as a problem. Wow. And I know for sure if you look up the FDA, um, the issues and complaints against relaxers, that's one of the products that has the most amount of complaints. Mm -hmm. And the FDA is only responsible for regulating what's on the label, but they have no control, and nor do they permit or make cosmetic companies uh, prove efficacy or prove that that product exactly. actually will perform the way that they say that it will. Exactly. I know your story is slightly different, but you became natural for another reason, and I'd like for you to tell us a little bit about that. Well, I actually started thinking about um, what makes your hair better. And um, I started the transition, actually, I can think all the way back to, the, to when I was uh, pregnant with my daughter. And you know the old saying that your grandmother would say, you better not perm your hair while you're pregnant. So that's where it started for me, and, and thinking all the way back to where, where it started for me wanting to wear my natural hair. And after um, being pregnant, I put it in braids, and after I had my daughter, I took my hair down, and it was a totally different texture. It was soft, it was beautiful, and one of, the, one of the ways we looked at it is, oh, that's part of being pregnant. All of this becomes very beautiful and very natural. And for me, I thought, well, if, if, if I could do this, you know, while I'm during my pregnancy, this can be my hair all the time. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I started um, putting on the weaves and the braids and growing my natural hair out, uh, but leaving the perm mm -hmm. on the hair. And, um, and I went to get... Uh, a, a full weave done, and, and this is the trauma part that started for me. And I was told that if I were to put a cap on my hair mm -hmm. and sew the hair onto the actual cap, this. Mm -hmm. that this would protect my hair more than just sewing the whole weave in. So for me, thinking, okay, I'm really, I really want to keep my hair natural and I want to keep it healthy. Okay, let's put a, a cap on it. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but I'm looking at a professional who's telling me that this is going to protect my hair underneath. And as she was sewing the cap onto my head, I kept saying, wow, this is really tight. Wow, this is, and even to the point where I became uh, lightheaded. And so th these are all the clues that was telling me that this is not correct. And I, I even asked, I said, you know, this is really getting tight. So you didn't suffer in silence, like most people. You actually said to her, this is a little too tight, it's uncomfortable. I, I even called after the service was done, and I said, you know, it's not, we're always told, oh, take a little, you know, medicine, it'll loosen up, right. get in the shower, let the steam, what? that'll make it loosen up, <laughs> give it three days or so, right. put a little grease on the scalp, all of that will make this loosen up. And you know, not. it's not always the wearing of the extension, it's the tension that you feel initially, but it's at the point when you remove it. Now I know that we, um, we 
I want to I want to let you finish telling your incomplete story, but I want to make sure that we point out a couple of things. I know when we spoke about it, you said that it was the removal when yes. you removed the extension. If you're not removing the extensions properly, especially if you notice during the time you were wearing the extension that there was some extreme tension, then you should see a stylist. That's not something that you want to do at home. So when you went to your stylist and she removed the extension, what did you experience? Well, I actually went to another stylist uh, to have it removed. Because for some reason, I just knew, you know, I, I wore this as long as I could because it's, it was a very expensive process and I didn't want to waste my money. So I went to her and I, and I told her, you know, this is very tight. And during the removal process, she was letting me know that, you know, there's been some damage embracing, embracing me because this was, she knew that this was going to be very traumatic for me. So that was part of the process of, of getting, uh, seeing my hair fall down and then at the end of that process being totally bald in certain areas. When I first, when you, when you became a client at Natural Resources, I remember you telling me that you'd gone through some trauma. Yes. Now, since February, you've been using natural products. Now, when you went to visit your doctor, he also told you no more relaxers. That's correct. When you saw your dermatologist. Mm -hmm. And That's so now we have two people for two different reasons that have been told by a physician that they can no longer relax their hair. And so I think that's something that we should all take into consideration. R really quickly, we need to move on to our next segment. But I'd like for you to just know a few of the ingredients that you should be looking for when you're shopping for products. The products in your ingredient list is in order from most to least. And so if you're looking in the label, you if you see alcohol, petroleum, mineral oil, sulfates, silicones, parabens, propylene glycol, pigments, preservatives that you don't recognize, we'll put a list of these ingredients are on Facebook so that you can go back and look at what you should be looking for. We also have a list of healthy things that you'll look for. And we'll also post that list on Facebook at naturalresourcessalon.com or Natural Resources Salon on Facebook. Oils, herbs, butters, extracts, things that you recognize, things that you know the name of, numbers, colors, all those things are things that you don't need for natural hair. We need real amount of oils and real butters. And to move on to our next segment, we're going to do a do-it-yourself hairstyle. Then Tony will come back and join us and we'll show you how to make your own natural products, which is a, a very big part of her book. She gives you ingredients and gives you recipes on how to create your own beauty products at home. But for now, Robin and I will show you a great holiday style that doesn't take a lot of time or money if you have a special occasion and you're looking for something to do for the holiday. So we'll move around to the next part of our segment. The style that we're going to create today for her hair is called a romance bun. It's a very simple style. It doesn't take a lot of time or energy to create. And I know some of you are saying, I can't do this at home, but I'm going to show you step by step on what you need to do to get the style created. So we're going to start with a simple band. Now you can do this with or without texture in your hair. Today she's wearing a twist out. So we will just use the texture in her hair. The base of this style is a simple side pony. Once that's done, we are going to use extension hair, but to get started, we're going to use her own natural hair to create a very soft two-strand twist, a flat two-strand twist. Very similar to making a cornrow. Once you started your twist, you're going to add the extension as if it was your own hair, continuing to twist. And this is not tight. It doesn't have 
to be tight. It doesn't have to be uncomfortable. One of the things we just talked about was too much tension. And so be sure to keep in mind that you don't have to suffer in silence. If you're in, in your stylist chair and you're experiencing pain, speak up and let her know that it's uncomfortable. And you'll save yourself lots of trauma and headache later on. So we're going to twist this all the way to the end. We'll use another piece for this back portion. So now that we have our ponytail in place, we'll add this the same way we did before, just splitting it in two and twisting it the same way you would your own hair. And you do want to use the entire twist if you want a lot of volume for this style. I actually like to use the entire piece. In a few minutes, I'll show you why. So once this part is done, actually, I'm going to rub it in the middle. Turn this. This one we have a nice circle. Now we'll use our top. Here. Use scissors to just trim off any flyaways. And be creative with your pinning. This is just one way to pin this style into place. Using textured hair, you can use straight hair. I like this hair in particular because it's inexpensive and it has enough length to give you a really dramatic change. Voila. This style is great for a holiday party, for a happy hour, for a night out with your girlfriend. <laughs> Let me give her a chance to take a look at this style. Very nice. Okay, great. Now the style that she had before was created from a flat twist. The style was washed, conditioned, or shampoo conditioned, blown dry. We did a flat twist. About maybe, what would you say, 10 or 12 flat twists. We let the twist dry, release the twist. We use Earth Nectar products for the entire process. We like to use hair conditioning cream for our detangling and possibly nourish, depending on if your hair is dry when you start the detangling process. We also use honey curls to twist the flat twist into place, allow the twist to dry and release it. I actually did the same thing for my style. This is a very quick do-it-yourself style. It's a simple two-strand twist. 
My hair was blown out to start. Um, I did use Honey Curls, the same product that I use for her. And that product is available on our website. But you would two strand twist and allow it to dry and release the twist. I like that because it gives you a very soft twist. It doesn't have, it's not a firm hold, it's just a very light, soft honey hold. So now we'll move on to our next segment. Or well, actually, I think we have another model that we'd like to. Well, I think we'll move on to the next segment. I don't want us to run out of time, and we want to show you how to create your own product for the holiday. So what we'd like to do now is move over to our next section. And if you'll follow me this way. Now we'll have Tony to come back to join us to create our product. Okay, great. Tony, while I'm setting this up, I want you to tell them where they can find the book and how they can find you. Okay. Well, this is the book. It's Chemical Suicide Death by Association. And you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash chemical suicide or T. Alika Hickman um, and on Facebook. But you can also go on my website and get the book at www.tonihickman.com. That's tonyhickman.com and go to the author's page and you can get the book. Excellent. Thank you so much. So now we actually have prepared a product that we'll show you in just a few minutes. But this product is a very simple product. It doesn't take a lot of time or energy to create. You'll take cocoa butter in your Pyrex dish. You want to melt the cocoa butter. We use a flexible mold for this because it is really easy to release the cocoa butter once it's actually cooled into place. We're going to use salt because if you do a salt scrub, you sit the oil and salt. Mm -hmm. This way, if you use the cocoa butter, then it's not messy. You can take it into the shower. You can use it and put it into a soap dish without, without a whole lot of mess. So, to start, you would just simply take salt, put it into your mold, melt your cocoa butter, and pour your cocoa butter into the mold, allow it to cool in the refrigerator, and when you finish, it should be a solid cake that you can take into the shower and use similar to a soap bar. Okay, so once that's good, at the end of the segment, we hope to show you the finished version of that style. But next, we'd like to move into our next product. And allow me a moment to grab ingredients so that we can make an ultimate hair smoothie. The next product is something that you can make with most of the ingredients that you have in your kitchen. A simple blender, a knife, eggs, avocado, yogurt, mayonnaise, all simple things that you can use to create your own hair smoothie. When we first started Natural Resources, and that was about 10 years ago, I didn't find any products that I liked for natural hair. And so I started looking like most people at both of my create a product, but we started making food products, food-based products. We couldn't preserve them initially, so we started making things we could preserve. But they're going to bring over some ingredients for us. Thank you very much. We don't need it. 
for this particular uh, project. So we're gonna take our avocado and with our scoop, isn't that oh, neat? Oh, cool. Isn't that neat? You don't have to make a mess. Scoop your avocado. I'm gonna actually double up on ingredients because I really wanna make a nice hearty smoothie. Now I have some tablespoons to use for measuring. 